Okay, so welcome to this vi uh, second video on the universality of the uniform distribution. Okay, so in this video we're going to prove the statement that I said last video. Okay, so, uh, take a CDF. Take a CDF, uh, which is a function f, which is going to map the real line onto the real line. Oh, well, it's going to actually map it onto uh, the interval 0 to 1. Uh, which is crucial here. Uh, so it's going to map the real line onto the interval 0, 1 and uh, we're going to make some assumptions about it. So firstly we're going to say that it's strictly increasing rather than monotonically increasing. Uh, it's just going to make everything a lot easier to deal with because if it's monotonically increasing what you can end up with is lines, bits that look like this, i.e. they stay level, whereas if it's strictly increasing, it always has to increase. The, the, if you uh, go forward by some amount, uh, say this is uh, x, um, x bar and this is x, if x bar is greater than x, then f of x bar has to be greater than f of x. In this case, where you're monotonically increasing, uh, it just has to be greater than or equal to f of x, which of course uh, this is. This this would be monotonically increasing, but it wouldn't be strictly increasing. So we're going to make the slightly stronger uh, statement that f of x bar is greater than f of x uh, whenever uh, x bar is greater than x. Okay, that's, that's what strictly increasing means. We're also going to make the assumption that it is continuous, uh, which is very nice because it means it obeys the intermediate value theorem. So if you take uh, any number between 0 and 1, uh, there will exist some point uh, in the real numbers, uh, so let's call it y, uh, so it means that it obeys the intermediate value theorem, uh, which means that uh, you take, take uh, let's get. Let's call this. Uh, let's take. Call it v. Take v as an element of uh, of zero to one. Uh, the open interval between zero and one. Uh, there exists uh, a y is an element of the real numbers such that uh, f of y uh, is equal to v. Okay, so that's going to help us a lot. Okay, so basically this is the idea of the uh, the simple idea of this proof. So, we have our abstract probability space here, remember, uh, which we'll call uh, sample space F and P. And then we have this random variable uh, X, which is uniformly distributed, uniformly distributed on the interval 0 to 1, which is mapping you onto the interval 0 to 1. And it's mapping you with equal, um, it's mapping you with CDF. So if we find the CDF of this, uh, remember, um, if you have the interval 0 to 1, uh, the CDF is going to look like that, uh, rising up to 1 by the time you get to 1. Uh, so the CDF is actually just f of x, um, which will, and we'll label it with this f of x, and we'll put big x down there to denote the fact that this is the CDF for the random variable x. In fact, let's make it simple. Let's call this random variable u. Uh, so f of u of x is just equal to your x value along here, your little x value. Okay, uh, so now what we want to find is uh, given any old CDF, any old CDF that satisfies those properties that it is strictly increasing and continuous, given any old CDF that say uh, f of x, big F of x, uh, so that's something that looks like um, this, uh, just to give a uh, picture to what we're dealing with here. So it goes between 0 and 1. So now, uh, the way we want, we want to construct a random variable, we want to construct a, let's call it y, uh, such that uh, we map it onto a probability space in the real numbers, uh, such that um, the CDF for this probability space is actually equal to this CDF here. Well, here's an idea for you. We have a random variable here, which is ascribing to every outcome in here. So let's say that this be a little outcome, s. Then we ascribe it u of s, uh, which is a number between 0 and 1. Well, basically, this CDF is going to go between 0 and 1. So why don't we try taking f inverse, uh, big F inverse, of um, each point u of s. So basically, you have an outcome in here. You map it onto here, you map it onto u of s, which is a number between 0 and 1. Now what I'm saying is go over here and find me, find me whichever point. So let's say this is u of s here, u of s. 
find me the inverse point of that. Uh, and because of the assumptions I made, because I made the assumption that it was strictly increasing and continuous, there will exist such a point, providing u of s is an element of the open interval 0 to 1. And that's why I haven't put closed interval 0 to 1. Uh, because if we had closed interval 0 to 1, the points 0 and 1 would be dodgy, uh, because there isn't necessarily a point which will actually be 0. I mean, in some CDFs, for instance, if we had a CDF that actually did go down to zero and stay at zero like that. Uh, that obviously has a point which equal to zero, but it just has to converge on zero. And for some uh, CDFs, which we will see later, for instance, um, the normal distribution and things like that, um, the uh, CDF is never actually going to equal zero. So um, we can't say with full gener generality that there will be an F inverse of zero. So we take U of S, we then take F inverse of it. Remember F we are just viewing as a function from the real line onto zero one, which is all it actually is. Uh, so you take a point in zero, uh, you've got some point in zero and one, and you're going to say, take f inverse of this point, u of s, and basically, that's the number I want to ascribe to s. So this uh, point s goes to now f inverse uh, of u of s. So that is going to ascribe to every outcome in this probability space, it's going to ascribe it a number. Okay, and I'm going to say that y, this random variable, is going to map s onto uh, f inverse of u of s. Uh, so that's how you're going to ascribe a real number to each of your each of your points um, in your uh, original abstract probability space. So now, now let's calculate the CDF for this random variable. Now, calculate uh, CDF of y of y. Okay, so we want the probability that y is less than or equal to, let's say, little y. So, um, we take some y, which is an element of the real numbers, let's say this is y, and I want the probability that it's less than or equal to y. Well, that corresponds to the probability that it's or any of these numbers along here, which means that um, the u value, so remember how we're defining this function, you take uh, your u value, um, I need the picture, you take your u value, your u of s, which is over here, and you map it onto here. If you were mapped onto this portion of the real line, that means that you must have been in this portion of 0 to 1. So basically, if you take uh, if you take f of y, then that will give you some number between 0 and 1. And it's basically asking the probability uh, that um, u is less than or equal to f of y. Uh, I want to say that again because it's really important. Uh, so... You uh, in fact, I'll draw another picture because this one's looking a bit crowded. So you take some CDF that we have here, and I'll draw the same CDF to avoid confusion. Uh, so we want to work out the CDF of this random variable y. So we're asking the probability that y is less than or equal to some little y. So you take some little y, and you want the probability that it's less than or equal to that little y. Now, if you got a value of this of little y that was less than or equal to this, so one of these values of little y, that meant uh, that your u value was somewhere in this portion here. And so this is equal, uh, since we want uh, the probability space structure of this to inherit the probability space structure of this. Uh, so if we take uh, this event here, we want the probability of that event to be the same as the probability of this event, which is its pre-image in this probability space over here. Okay. Uh, so, it's going to be equal to the probability that u is less than or equal to this value here, which is f of y, big F of y, less than or equal to big F of y. Okay, uh, so uh, the probability that u is less than or equal to big F of y, well, we know what the, uh, we know what the um, CDF of uh, the random variable u is. This is equal to uh, big F, uh, the CDF of u of... Uh, this value here, which is now functioning as our little x. Sorry, you can't see this. Um, so we're asking the probability that u is less than or equal to f of y. Well, that is the CDF of the random variable u, which is of this value f of y, which is just equal to f of y, which means uh, that indeed uh, our CDF is f of y. So the CDF of this random variable y is your, is your um, function that you wanted. So you have got 
a random variable with the CDF exactly what you wanted. If you want, we could replace little y with x. We could say, what is the probability that y is less, big Y is less than or equal to uh, little x? Then that is equal to f of x. So the CDF of this new random variable which we've created in this way uh, is going to be equal to uh, the function that we started with, i.e., if you have a um, abstract probability space and you have a random variable uh, bijecting it onto uh, a uniform uh, a probability space with a uniform distribution on zero to one. I can find you a random variable from that abstract probability space that will map it onto a pro whichever probability space you want. You give me a CDF and I can find you uh, a, a random variable which will map your probability space onto that um, onto that onto the standard probability space in the real with elements in the real numbers with that CDF. And I for one find that quite surprising.